Today we are going to go through the main schools and main school approval report. We have with us today um, Alex Newman from the help desk and Pam Ford Taylor. So she will be here to answer questions about um, anything that comes up requirement wise. Um, for anyone who has not used the platform for Teams, there is a Q&A button up at the top. You can press that if you have a question that comes up. We'll stop throughout the webinar to um, answer any questions that seem pertinent. Uh, we'll, if we have a question that comes up and it seems like it will go with something else, we'll kind of wait off uh, wait and put it off until we get to that point. Um, but Alex will be manning that for the time being and answering those questions and we'll answer them out loud as well. With that being said, it is great to have you all here with us today. My name is Alexandra Cookson. I am the data quality trainer with the Maine Department of Education data team. Um, if you have any questions about reporting, uh, you can ask me about them. I will help you with any input. Uh, those come to me, so I'm happy to have you all here. Today we're going to talk about the main schools, main school approval report. We're going to go through what it looks like in the module and we will uh, really focus on kind of the logistics of entering the data to uh, get everything you need in. So let's get started here. Before we get into the report, just a few things, uh, housekeeping things, um, upcoming reporting and webinars. We have the ESE demographics report, which opened last week. Main school application will be opening soon. Um, next week, we have a home instruction reporting webinar that will also be with Pam Ford Taylor joining me. And so that will be at 10 o'clock next week as well. Following week, we have an end of year enrollment exits webinar. And then we have a end of year report certifications webinar uh, the last week of, of May. So feel free to join us for all of those. We have an ESEA, the ESEA demographics is due in June. Main schools um, is open through June, um, all end of year reporting and then um, exits of students at the end of the school year. Navigating the main schools report so on the main schools report we are on the help desk website we have the data reporting instructions tile on that tile you'll be able to link to the instructions page um, for this report and i think i actually needed to update this and i don't think i got to it quite yet because alex just uploaded the new uh, instructions page. Actually, nope, that was for home instructions. Sorry. So everything, it looks good. So on the data reporting instructions page, you have the fiscal year 24 main schools instructions um, that will take you to the instructions document to go through as you are reporting on your main schools. Um, they will have step by step instructions, what you need to do, what you need to keep in mind. Uh, that document will be very helpful for that. This is just an overview of main schools and the main school approval process. Uh, main schools is the process by which Maine DOE collects the organization information about Maine LEAs and schools for the upcoming school year. Um, so this is really just a way for us to get information and ensure that all schools are following statutory requirements um, and ensure that we have all updated contact information for anyone that we're, we need to get in contact at schools. Um, so it's really important that this is up to date and accurate um, to the best of your knowledge as soon as possible so that we can get everything set for next year. Uh, we also use this report to set up synergy and um, ensure that everyone has access and accurate school grade levels within each school for next school year. Reporting requirements, all LEAs are required to report um, so that we have all ac accurate information from all schools. This report opens tomorrow. Um, we have a few things that are kind of coming up with it. It may be a little bit delayed, but we will have some things posted on our website about any changes to this opening period. We have a due date of 815. This is kind of open all through the year, but we really look for 815 to ensure that Synergy is up to date. As we said, that's how we set up our Synergy um, schools to ensure that all grade levels are there. And any if you are having any issues in the in August about adding your 
students into Synergy, it may be because you haven't updated main schools yet. So this is really an important key to getting into the Synergy, um, at least from the data team perspective. When navigating to this report, the first thing that you want to do is get into NEO. Um, so NEO, and then you'll click on main schools and you'll be able to get right into this report. So we'll go through kind of the different steps of getting there. It's a couple of different buttons we have to press. Um, if you do not have an access or have a NEO access, then you will need to complete a NEO access request form. Anyone who needs to have access to this would need to add information, like they would need to be added into NEO staff. So if you do not have an active staff assignment in NEO, we will not be able to create your account. So that needs to be set up and then we'll be able to give you access so that you can get in and um, do any necessary updates. I see Alex is asking or is answering a question about a new superintendent who's starting on 7-1. I'm sure many people have this coming up. Um, if you would like to wait until after your superintendent starts on 7-1 to complete this report, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, and then you'll be able to update the role and have the accurate superintendent. Many, many places, um, you know, have that update coming through. So we recognize that that may be an issue um, and it can wait until 7-1. Superintendents for this report need to be need to be verified in NEO staff, which means that you need to go into staff, certification, certification report, and then in your district role section way down at the bottom, you'll need to set your current superintendent as the designee and um, save them as the designee as superintendent for your district. So in order to do that, um, in order for your superintendent to ver to be verified and be able to submit this report, you'll need to go through that additional step in NEO staff. It may be something that a business manager would be able to assist with. On the NEO home screen, you have main schools. Uh, when you click on main schools, it will bring you to this next screen where you can search for SAUs and their schools to update. So you'll just click on that and come to your search screen. So on the search screen, you're gonna wanna make sure you're in the current fiscal year. The current fiscal year, uh, for example, for 2022, 2023 was fiscal year 2023. Um, for this coming um, school year, you'll use fiscal, uh, it will be school year 2023, 2024. So the fiscal year will be 2024. Um, and you'll select your SAU and then you'll need to click on the search button. Once you have your search completed, you'll have your list of schools that qualify for that search and you'll have different statuses that will indicate what where that application is in progress. So you have status new when you first get into the report, it will be in status new. Nothing has been started yet. Um, in progress means that something has been started there. Organization, organization data has been submitted means that it's come to us. Um, it's pending approval. Um, those ones are kind of self-explanatory. Um, and there will be some, some of the um, statuses are that they, you know, you've received some information back from Pam um, and something needs to be updated. Um, so you may see those statuses. All of the statuses are set to go to superintendent's email addresses. So those will go to them. Um, so they should be keeping an eye out for them. And then if they need to be trickled down, um, you would want to make sure that that gets um, communicated, that that would be something to keep an eye out for. Once you click into the report, you'll see that you have your status, your fiscal year. Once it's signed and submitted, you'll see who was submitted, who signed it. Um, and then you'll have a couple different sections that will need to be completed. So this first, the top section is your SAU organization data. So this is your district level data for your SAU. Um, you would wanna make sure that all email addresses, phone numbers, um, websites are updated so that we can get into contact with the right people. Um, mailing addresses for anything that goes out via snail mail, we'll wanna make sure that that goes out um, 
to the right places. So ensure that everything is up to date, ensure that your, um, ensure that all questions are answered. So down at the bottom, you can see we have 18 out of 18. Um, there are 18 questions for this section that need to be answered. This is where you kind of go through for the statutory requirements and say whether you completed them or not. Um, and then you'll want to confirm that all answers have been reviewed. And then just a couple things here. Um, if I so, may interject real quick, Allie, uh, one of the most common things I saw last year were incorrect website URLs. So I would uh, point out to double to double and triple check you have the correct website URLs in there. Yep. Thank you for that, Alex. Um, so those are all the fields that need to be updated. Um, ensure that all questions are answered. Um, everything is as accurate as you can. As Alex said, double, triple check. Um, have someone else take a look at it. I know when I'm doing presentations like this, I always, there's always something that Alex sees that um, he notices a mistake because I run it by him and he he's my grammar police and my spelling police. So ensuring that someone else's eyes are on it can kind of help mitigate some of that, um, the challenge of ensuring that everything is as accurate as possible. So this was your SAU section. There's another section for school level data. Um, school level data, you may have um, more than one. If you have more than one school, you would have multiple of these. Um, ensure that your grade level, grade spans are accurate. Um, those are gonna be really important to making sure that um, in synergy, you have the correct grade levels to enroll students within your school. Um, so, yeah, and then once again, you'll have questions here to answer to ensure compliance with all statutes. Um, and then you'll need to confirm that the section has been reviewed down at the bottom and include all of your information there. Once again, triple, double, triple check as many times as you need to in order to ensure that all of this is up to date, accurate, and um, get somebody else's eyes on it might be helpful to ensure that everything is accurate. Once you are at this point, um, the biggest and most important thing that I probably should have started with even um, is that as you're going through this process, save, save, save. Save your progress, make sure that everything is getting, that's updated, gets saved before you exit out of everything. You know, make sure everything stays there. This can be a very like long, arduous process. It can be really helpful if you have as much information from it as possible out ready to go. So you can go through and you have a document of, you know, here's how I'm filling it all out. So that if you do happen to lose anything, you can come back into it and get right to it and get it done efficiently. Um, it can be really, <clears throat> really frustrating when you get to a point where, you know, you've done it once and then maybe forgot to save. And so just make sure that you're kind of keeping documentation beyond just within NEO so that if something were to happen, that you have that backup and you can go right in and um, complete it as best you can and in the most efficient way as possible. So save, save, save. That's my biggest um, thing I wanted to hit home on as well um, to really save your time um, as you're doing this. I know the end of the school year and the beginning of the school year can be really busy. So make sure that you're doing everything you can. And then the once everything has been submitted, you'll need to save the report before you can submit to DOE. So the superintendent will be the one who has access. Once again, you'll need to have them verified in NEO staff in order to be able to complete this. Uh, so if it's grayed out, you would want to ensure that they have been verified there in NEO staff um, on that certification report under the designees. And then a few notes. Once again, press the save button before you submit to the Department of Education. Status updates, once again, are set are set up to be delivered to the superintendent's email address. So ensure that, um, you know, if you are concerned about a status, you haven't heard anything, it would be best to reach out to your superintendent and say, have we seen anything about this? Um, and they would be able to check and see if 
a status has a status update has occurred. Um, so you would be able to see that from them. Um, and then the last thing we have here is our questions. Does if anyone has any questions, feel free to post them in the Q and A. We'll kind of hang out a little bit to answer any questions that pop up. Um, as we wait for questions, I'll go through some of the contact information. So reporting questions, always best to reach out to the Medems Help Desk. The first stop there um, in case they, they will probably be able to help you with any troubleshooting, uh, something that may not be working. Um, this report does not have anything to do with Synergy other than it unlocks it for you. So for the for the following school year, so all of the all of the things will be done within um neo um if you have questions about your approval status your um you know if you have a pending request or you get some feedback back about things that need to be updated those types of questions would be best directed towards pam Ford taylor um, she would be able to help you navigate some of the requirements there and then if you have any questions about navigating within neo synergy um i would be happy to take any of those questions or calls or set up any trainings with you or anyone in your um district that has um, that would like more information so that is all we have for you today i don't see any questions coming in we will wait a moment alex do you have something yeah i just wanted to add a clarification about that the, the issue with the URLs being incorrect is when we're we are reviewing the submission and the URL is incorrect or broken, we will reject it and, you, and you'll have to resubmit with the correction. So in reviewing it and making sure it's correct, you're avoiding that re initial rejection of the, of the submission. Right. Yeah, we go through and um, we will check everything and see like URLs are really easy to make sure that they're correct because they either work or they don't work. Um, and but there may be other places where like a phone number may be entered like incorrectly. Um, so just, you know, double check, triple check, save your progress. Those are the big things to really consider as you are completing this report. Not seeing any new questions. So I think what we will do is we will wrap it up. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to email the Madam's Help Desk. Um, about reporting questions, and then Pam would be able to answer any of your uh, kind of statutory requirement questions. So those can go to her. Um, with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and happy Teacher Appreciation Week. I hope you have all kinds of wonderful things going on at your schools. Um, and I hope you enjoy this wonderful weather. So um, have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you. Um, throughout this process.